Hello, welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how we can get data file from FTP server and whatever data present in the data file insert into the database table. In this is the series of 01 and this series we will continuously discuss about getting data file from server. We'll start from CSV data file with less than 10 MB. Later on, we will move to that what we will do if we our data size is exceed than 10 MB. Then after we will go for that what if our data size is more than 50 MB. Everything we will discuss and we'll create separate videos for each and everything. That's why we provided the series and this is the series 01. So let's first discuss about the requirement. So there can be the business requirement where we have to get the data file present over SFTP or FTP server and whatever data we have in the data file, we need to insert that data into ATP table. Instead of ATP table, there can be different different database. There can be Oracle database. There can be any other database. So we have to insert data into the database table. In this test case or in this series, we have database data file size is less than 10 MB. We'll create separate videos where we will learn how we will get the data file with more than 10 MB of size. Everything we will discuss in details. Now here you can see what kind of a step we need to perform while doing the, the solution for this requirement. The first we have to create integration. In that integration, we have to add a REST adapter so that we can configure request and response payload. So in the request payload, we will ask file name and the file directory from the user while running the integration so that we can get the data file from that directory only. After that, we will add FTP adapter. This FTP adapter will help us to get a file from FTP server or SFTP server. After that, we will use ATP adapter. In this case, as we have ATP database. So this ATP database adapter will help us to insert data into the table. So this kind of steps we need to perform and we have to use mapper for each and every any point. Now let's first discuss about the FTP adapters, what kind of uh, requirement and the, the, what kind of validation we have for the FTP adapter. So here you can see FTP read a file operation can read file up to 10 MB only. So with the help of FTP adapter, if we are going to get data file from the server, we can get data file up to 1 GB. That's perfectly fine. But when it comes to read the data file directly from FTP, we can read max to max 50 MB of data only. If data size exceeds 50 MB, it will generate an error. So in this case, for solving that error, we have to use download file operation instead of read a file of FTP adapter. So once we will use download file operation, it will download the data file from FTP server and place into OIC virtual directory. And then with the help of STG stage activity, we will use read file in segment operation to read the data present in OIC virtual directory in the previous step. So that kind of things we are going to do. Now here we have a stage file activity. It is the same as discussed that a stage file with the help of that file read entire file, we can read up to 10 MB of data only. If our file size is greater than 10 MB, we cannot use read entire file operation of a stage file activity. It will generate an error at the time. If data file size will cross 10 MB. That's why we have read file in segment operation in a stage file activity. With the help of read file in segment operation, we can read up to 1 GB of data in the segment or in the chunk of 200 records. So that's the basic details related to requirement, the activity we are going to perform and all. Let's begin to the practical part. So here we have already created the integration instance. Here we will create integration. So before going to start, let me show you the data file. So here you can see we have data file. This is the data file and this data file is present in FTP server. Here you can see this is the file server and in this file server we have this data file. We have three different different data file. I will create separate videos where I will show you how we can access how we can read. So in this first test case or the first series, we have the data file and the data file size is less than 10 MB that is 9.42 MB. And the remain data file has greater than 10 MB, the, the 17 MB and it's the greater than 50 MB and all. So we will learn everything in details. 
So now you can see we have data file, data, that kind of data here. We ha I have already created sample file for same data so that we can configure this in endpoint while reading the data. That will be easy. That's why I already created a sample file. So how you can get the sample file? So whenever you will get a requirement, you need to connect with the team. The team is going to place the file over server. You need to ta ask a sample file of this file. This sample file is used in integration to configure the structure of the file we are going to read. Now comes to integration part. Once we will move to integration, we require connections or connections to, to make a connectivity with FTP server and the ATP database. So I have already created two connections. The first connection is FTP ATP connection and another one is that the FTP connection. So FTP is going to get data file from server. ATP is going to insert data into the table. And already I have created various REST and REST connections so that we can configure the request and response payload. Let's move to the integration and create. So just I will click on this create. And I will select app driven as I have to pass the data file name and the directory while running the integration. So just select. And here we have to give the name xx get csv file from ftp less than nmb. So now click on create. So it will create integration and in the canvas you can see we don't have anything as app driven doesn't provide anything. So now we have to add the rest endpoint so that we can configure request and the response payload. So let's move to the trigger part and here we have rest connection. I will use the rest endpoint here. Now we have to provide the name to the endpoint. So I will use a start rest this is the name I am going to provide. You can use whatever you want. Now here we have to provide. So read file. And here I will select the operation method as post so that we can configure request and response payload. Click here for adding the request payload, adding the response payload. Now next. Here we have to provide the JSON structure and the sample of the request payload. So what request payload I am going to provide? I am simply going to provide as file name. What will the file name we will provide at runtime? And the second is file directory. This is the simple structure we have to provide. That's why I given here. Now here we have to click on OK. Next, same we have to provide the JSON structure for response payload. So in the response, what we want to return? I in response, I just want to return the what we can say. Just a status as success or error, right? So here I will use status and that's it. A status and let me add one more thing, message. If you will have any error, we will use error message, else it will be success only. Now, okay, done. Next, done. So we have successfully added the rest endpoint to configure the request and the response below. Here we will get the request payload and based on that this mapper we have to map the response so that this response can be written as a response as the integration response. Now save. So every time whenever you add one integration you will get one error. This error is related to the adding the business identifier or tracking variable. So let me add that one so that that error can, will be removed. So just I will use file name as a tracking variable. So now you can see we don't have any error. So now it's time to add the FTP adapter, FTP connection to get the file from server. So I will use FTP connection drag here. And here you can see this is our file server. Whatever file server I connected with this host and user, the same we have in the connection, FTP connection. So I will use, as I am going to use read file operations, I will provide name as read file underscore FTP is the endpoint name and read file is my operation name. You can use whatever you want. Now here I will select read a file as I want to read the file. And we know that FTP adapter doesn't have any any uh, restriction with the file less than 10 MB. So here now we have to provide the file name directory and the file name. So I will not provide anything here as I have to provide in the mapping so that I can map this request payload values with here. So go next. And yes, I have to provide the structure. 
so that whenever you are, you are going to read, you need to provide the structure so that based on that structure, it will read the data. It will open the data so that you can map. So it's sick in CSV and now here we have to upload the sample file. As I discussed earlier, I told you I have already created this sample file. You can also create the same. So I will upload this sample file. So here we have the sample file. I will click open and yet we have to provide the endpoint name. Record. Or set. Yes, this is the name. You can provide any name here. As this is CSV file, it automatically comes here, comma. If you have type separated file, you can change it later and all. All the details will be remain same. I just remove this mark all as optional to a mandatory to option and the first column need to be mandatory. So next and done. So we successfully added the rest FTP and point to get the file from server and read the file. It will both perform two operation get the file from server and it will also read the file data. Now we have to provide the mapping. So here I will edit the mapping. In the mapping, I have to ask the file name and the directory. So this is the file name I will get as a request payload and the directory. Now validate. Validate and close. <coughs> Save. So now we have added FTP endpoint. Now it's time to add the ATP endpoint to insert the data. So here we have ATP and connection. I will perform here. Now here we have to give the name. Insert ATP. Insert is the operation we are going to perform and ATP is the endpoint name. And here I will select perform an operation on a table and select insert operation. Next. Here we have to select the uh, schema. So my schema is here. You can see. So how you can identify your schema table name and all. So here you can see I have already created the table. I have already created the table so that this table will store the data in this table. We have to insert the records and here you can see this table doesn't have data right now. You can see this table doesn't have any data. So how we will identify the the what we can say schema of this table and all. So the simple way is that here you can see right click here in the connection and you can see username it mostly is the schema here. So this is the Fox username and if you want to clarify what you need to do you need to write a query select a star from all objects where object name is equals to your object name like table name here in this case. So I will just copy this table name and provide and here it will show you the schema. So you can see the owner is the schema. So my owner is Fox. It means a schema. A schema of this table is Fox. So I will select Fox here. So somewhere we will have Fox. Yes. In the schema, what we have to do, we have to use table. So I selected table already. Now you have to provide the table name. So this is the table name. Just search. It will show you the table name. Just move to next and import. So this table is imported in this endpoint, in this ATP endpoint. As we don't have any primary key here in this table, that's why it's asking to add any column as a primary key. So I will use serial number. That's okay. And now next. Done. So here we successfully added the ATP endpoint. And here you can see while adding the mapping of this ATP endpoint so that we can provide the records, we have option to provide the bulk record. Bulk record means that we can provide the array record to, to this insert operation. Array record to this insert operation, it means that if we have hundreds records, all hundred record will be inserted in a single hit only. Else what we can do, we can, we have the data, we have data in this response of this endpoint. We can add a loop, loop on this response and inside the loop, we can add this endpoint and map each and every loop records. So instead of that, we can directly Add the mapping. So here I will edit the mapping. And here we have to map the value. So first this array will be mapped with the read response, read file response. And here you can see we have record set. Inside that we have record. And this is the array. You can see this is the array symbol. The both are array. So just map this array with this array. So that suppose if we record thousands of record, all the thousands records will be inserted in this table in a single hit only. Now map the value single serial number series. Here it's default value. So I will map each and every value here. Right. 
So I added the wrong mapping, so I will just remove the mapping, add a status unit, add a status again. There's magnitude, subject. Group two, group three. Let me add the map. Now here I have added some extra column like creators creation date created by instance ID. So the creation date will be our current date. So I will use function as provided here current date. So this is the current date I will use here in the mapping creation date. Now current date is map. Now here we have to use as yes use created by so first we have to convert this creation date into the string else it will throw an error because the value we added here as a varchar only right so i converted this date into a string now fine and here created by we will get the created by from this metadata only integration metadata so here we have in invoked by is the creation by invoked by is the created by and the instance id here we will have the instance id in the runtime details only so now we have done with the mapping i will just validate and close so we have to save here and done so right now here I will just hard code the value response value as success. You can use different different logic for adding the status. So I will just provide the mapping as success. Or else you can use a scope for file handling and based on that you can provide the different different uh, value. I will use recreation successfully completed. Now done, validate, and close. So here you can see we have done some val. Uh, you can see the first time first it will get the data file from server, read the data, and then it will insert the data into ATP table, return back response as success and integration completed. Now save and close. It's time to run the integration. So for running the integration, first we need to activate the integration. So here we have activated the integration. We activate this integration and now we have to run. So while running that one, we need to provide the file name and directory. So here you can see this is our file server and this is our file name. So I will copy this file name. So I will provide the file name here and this is our directory. So I will just copy this directory. And I will provide the directory here. Right. So we have already provided the value. Now it's time to test. So once I will click on test, integration will be executed and it will process whatever endpoint element we have done. And once process completed, we will get the data inside this table only. And if we have any error, we can see the error. We can work on the error part so that and it's fine. So here you can see integration completed and we got the response as success as we have provided hard coded value integration completed successfully completed and now you can see this is the log in the log only you can see here if you will refresh here you can see in the read ftp we read file ftp what value we passed we passed the same value in the mapping right so here you can see file name this is the same file name and this is the directory right and now you can see what value it, it is going to get the file from server and it will open the file in read mode so here you can see we have the file data in the response you can see the in response here you have we have file data so let me open the log again here you can see response read once you will click here you can see the data you can see this is all the data we have present in the data file that's large data so this is a simple way we can we can execute integration create integration to get the data file from server and all so let me show you the another uh, activity in the next video thank you so much for watching if you have any other queries want to ask anything you can make a comment on that thank you so much again